Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to properly calculate someone's age. Today's question comes from Jimmy from Amherst, New York, one of my silver members. Jimmy says, I saw a tip on YouTube a few days ago that showed how to calculate someone's age using date diff. However, if I type in my birthday, which is in December, and it's currently November, the calculation is not right. I need an accurate formula for determining age. I run a nightclub, and obviously we don't want to serve alcohol to 20-year-olds. You know what, Jimmy? You are absolutely right, and I will say you did not find this tip on my YouTube channel because I know how to calculate age correctly. In fact, after you emailed me, I went on YouTube, and I actually even did a Google search, and I found lesson after lesson, video after video, of people showing how to calculate age wrong. It's one of the problems I've got with YouTube and Google with their, their search placements is that you can have a tutorial that is completely incorrect and still get good search placement. The top like three answers that I found were all wrong. You cannot use date diff by itself to calculate age. Date diff only looks at the piece of the date that you give it. So if you tell it to find the difference in years, it just looks at the year. If you tell it 2000 to 2020, you're getting a 20. It doesn't matter where the birthday falls inside that year. So let me show you how it works and how to do it correctly. All right, I'm going to start off with my blank template. If you don't have a copy of this, you can grab it from my website. It's absolutely free. You'll find a link down in the description below. We can close the main menu. Let's create a table that's got two date fields in it. All right, I'll just throw an ID in because I always do. All right, let's put in date one. That'll be a date time, and we'll put in date two, just so I can show you how this works. And we'll call this my date T. All right, primary key, yes. And let's open it up and put some dates in here. Okay, today's date is November 16th, 2020. So I'm going to just fill that in here in date two. That'll, be, that'll substitute for today's date. I want to be able to show it to you a couple of different ways. Okay, so let's say someone was born on 11... 15, 2000. And then another person on 11, 16, 2000. And another person on 11, 17, 2000. And, oh, I don't know, 11, 12, 1, 12, 1, 2000. All right, we got a couple of different people here. All right, let's save this. Let's go over to a query now where we can do our calculations. As you can see, just by looking at it, this person and this person should both be 20 years old, right? Because they were born in 2000 and their birthday has passed or is today. These two people, their birthday has not passed yet, right? This person's birthday is tomorrow. This person's birthday doesn't come until December 1st. So these people should still show up as 19. Okay, got it? All right. Let's set up a query, do some calculations. Query design, bring over your date T. Okay, bring in date one, date two. Now this is how everybody else on YouTube shows how to calculate age, and it's incorrect. All right, I'm going to call it incorrect, colon. They use the date diff function. Now, I've got other videos on date diff if you've never used it before. I'll post some links down below in the description to some different videos on date diff that explain it in more detail. But basically, date diff takes the difference between two dates in whatever interval you specify. You can do days, months, quarters, weeks, years. It's really pretty powerful. So I'm going to use years, which is why, 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 why. You put that inside of quotes. Here, let me zoom in for you so you can see it better. All right, that's where we specify our interval, the year, comma, the first date, so date one, comma, the second date, date two. Those are my two fields. And you could put actual dates in here if you want to, like 1-1-2020, one, one, but you have to make sure you put dates inside of those little hashtags, right? Or you can use a function like date to return today's date. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use my two fields that I put in the table. So date 1 and date 2. And Axis puts brackets around them because they're fields. Okay, so I'm going to save this as my date Q. So save, control, S, date Q. And let's give it a run. All right, and there you can see everybody is 20. And these people should not be 20. That's because date diff only looks at the year. It doesn't take into consideration the day or the month. So with this calculation, Jimmy, your doorman will be letting in 20-year-olds all night instead of 21-year-olds, okay? Now, I think the reason why a lot of so-called access experts 
think that you should use date diff is because there is a slightly different date diff function in Excel, and that does work. Let me show you. Okay, here I am, old friend. It's been a while. I haven't done an Excel video in a while. I use Excel every day, but I, I haven't done a video in it in quite some time. But let's put the same data that we have in our Access database here in our spreadsheet. Let's just copy and paste it. All right, let's go to Access, select these two columns, copy, control C, switch back over to Excel, and paste. There it is. Let's widen these columns out so I can see everything. All right, the date format's slightly different, but that's okay. It's got the same information in it. Now, date diff in Excel works a little different, so I'll put here the age. All right, it's going to be equals date diff 1F, it's a little bit different. Then the, the order of the parameters are different too. You go date 1, comma, date 2, comma, and the interval is just Y, not four Ys like in Access. All right, there's 20, and if I autofill this down, you can see it's correct. Date diff in Excel does properly show you their age. It takes into consideration the entire date. And I think that's why a lot of people who know Excel and kind of know Access get it confused. All right, Access VBA uses a different function. So how do I calculate this correctly? There are two ways you can do it. One is using some simple math, and I'll show you the math in just a second. The second way is more accurate, but it involves a much more complicated formula, and I will show that in the extended cut for the members. But the way I'm going to show you right now works 99.999% of the time. I think it, it'll give you an error like once out of 5,000 years, which for everything you're doing for average everyday databases should work just fine. Let me show you. Let's go into our date queue again. Now, this calculation takes into consideration that access stores dates where a value of 1 equals 1 day. So what we're going to do is subtract date 1 from date 2 and then divide it by the number of days in a year. Okay, let me show you how that works. We're going to do it in steps. Just so you get it. Let me shrink that down here. Okay, so correct. All right, if I, if I subtract one date from another, here's what it looks like. So I'm going to say date 2 minus date 1. Okay, now if I take a look at what that gives me, that gives me the difference in the number of days, all right? There are 7,306 days between this date and that date, inclusively, okay? All right. So now what I want to do to get years is simply take that calculation and divide it by how many days are in a year. Normally, 365, all right? But we have to also take into consideration leap years, so 0.25. And if you really want to be exact, it's 0.2425. All right, that's the exact number that our calendar uses for calculating the number of days in a year because there are some crazy rules, right? Uh, centuries aren't leap years unless it's divisible by 400, which is why the year 2000 was a leap year, blah, blah, blah. Just remember that number there. And if you can't remember that, just remember 365 and a quarter. That's close enough. That'll work nine times out of ten. That's good enough. But if you want a really good number, 2425. Save that. And actually, after doing a little research, the real number is 365.24219, but our calendar doesn't use that year. That's why they sneak in leap seconds every now and then. All right? Okay, enough of that. So let's see what this gives us. Okay. That is the correct number of days, or excuse me, of years between this date and this date. Notice how it's not quite 20 there. Their birthday hasn't quite approached yet. All right, that is a very exacting number. Now, in order to convert that to their age, all we do is chop off the decimal place. All right, we don't want to round it. Don't use the round function because that'll round up, right? We don't want to round up. Their birthday hasn't passed yet. So to chop off the decimal place, we use the int function, I-N-T. Put that whole thing inside of int. And there you go. That is their correct age. And like I said, this will work like, I, I did some research on this, and it's, it's valid for most days for, like, thousands of years. So that's okay. That should work. Like I said, there is another function. I'll show the members in the extended cut that if you need an exact date and you cannot absolutely be wrong, you have to be 100% correct, That I'll show you that. But this will work for most people's databases just fine. I've been using this for years. All right, let me zoom in on it so you can see a good 
image of it there. There you go. That's how you do it. Instead of two dates, if you want to use today's date, just come in here and get rid of date two. And put the actual date function in there if you want it to be as of now. So let's assume date one is their actual date of birth. Don't use the now function. Now goes to the second. Date goes today's date at midnight, which legally is when their birthday kicks in and they become the next year. All right, let's see what this gives us. And there you go. All right, today's date is the 16th of November. Okay, so that formula will show you how to calculate someone's age 99.999% of the time it's correct. However, if for whatever purposes you're doing a legal database or, or you need 100% accuracy, there is a much better but much more difficult function that I can show you how to calculate age perfectly every single time. It's a lot more complex and involves date diff and date serial, and I will cover that in the extended cut for members. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like level one, level two is just one dollar, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.